A very warm welcome to each and every one of you joining us for our service today. This is CTM Broadcast Service, the family service where we always look forward to a wonderful time in worship and in the Word of God. It's not going to be any different today, so stay tuned. My name is Janet Kariuki. I'm going to be serving as your moderator for the service. You can always join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. It's African time on Hope FM, on Hope TV, and on our CTM chat online social media platforms that is mainly youtube and facebook imagine we are coming to that time when we are almost crossing over to the next year and we have so many reasons to thank the lord so this service will be about giving thanks to the lord so the hashtag for our service is given thanks hashtag given thanks more about that but first things first allow me to welcome this amazing worship team to take us further into the presence of the lord amen hallelujah Hallelujah. Wherever you are, you may glorify the name of Jesus as we begin today. You may clap your hands slowly.
kusema asante Yesu tunakubali kifame wa fame Tufusha januari tunaelekea disemba Yeah Nani kawalinda watoto wako Kailinda na kazi yako Hallelujah Afyo njema Mafoni kio inae ame kupa nani Come on One, two, three, go Come on Zitandazo mbingu Yeni Elohim Adonai Eligibo ni majina yake Ni mshauri wa ajabu Mfame wa yote nani Anai tupenda Hakuna mwingine duniani Zaidi yake kwa Come on!
Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands to Jesus. Lord, we glorify you. We will never hesitate to lift your name on high. Our hearts long for you, Lord. The morning, afternoon, and even your hours, Lord, we long for you. We long for you, Jehovah Rapha.
Nasema asante kwako Ungana pumunya nasi kupote ulipo Kwa mia kwana asante kwa yoto meafanya maisha ni mwangu Kwana kwa moyo Kwa moyo wangu wote Tunatamua kwa haikuwa kwa uweza wangu kumu zetu Ila ni kwa yale mungu wa meafanya Na shukuru kwa2021 will be a thing of the past. Why don't you start, uh, as you wind down uh, this year, to just start to count your blessings. Just count your blessings. Name them. Be specific to the Lord. Those things that he has done, that he has sustained you. He has sustained your salvation. He has provided for you. He has provided school fees. He has lifted up your business. Even when it seemed like it's going to crash, he has kept your children. He has kept your family. What is the blessing? that you're thanking the Lord for. Why don't you name them to the Lord and tell the Lord, thank you, thank you. This year was going to spell doom at the beginning, but thank you for coming to my rescue. Thank you for coming to my rescue. Thank you for coming through financially. Thank you for coming through, uh, through in my health. Thank you for coming through, oh God, what are you thankful to the Lord? This is very personal. What are you thanking the Lord for? Are you just thanking the Lord because you survived? It might have been a very tough year, but you can tell the Lord, see, I have survived. I thought this thing would bring me down. But Father, you have helped me see this day. I bless your name. Oh, what are you thanking the Lord? Let him know that you are grateful. What is that thing that you're thanking the Lord for? Name one, name two, name three. Tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you that you saw me through. Thank you for the blessings that you have brought my way this year, Father. Thank you for your increase, oh God. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. We thank you. You have been our, a good God. You have held our hands and we bless you. 
Oh, we bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts. We say thank you. With all our hearts, oh God, we say thank you. With everything in us, we say thank you. Maybe you're there and your heart is too heavy to thank the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to put the burden aside and just to lift up our praise. Because if you reflect, if you think about it, there is always something, more than one thing you can thank the Lord for. From January to November, there is more than one thing. If you really look, if you really search your heart, if you really reflect upon your life. And one more time, why don't we just lift up our voice and say, Kwamoyo. Wangu wote Nasema Asante kwa ko Masia Masia Nashukuru Nashukuru One more time from the depth of your heart Wangu wote Nasema Asante kwa ko our praise. You are so worthy of each and every praise that we can give. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you for joining us for the service and allow me to thank this amazing team that has led us in that session even during this service when we are thanking the Lord. Thank you so much. God bless you and increase you in your ministry and in your life. Amen, amen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome those who are joining us for the very, very first time, you have never been to CBS service, you have never been to a CBS service, we welcome you. We always meet here every Sunday, 10 a.m. East African time, and please join us. All right, uh, please also feel at Jesus' feet. We also want to welcome those who are joining this broadcast from Namibia, from America, from Romania and East Timor. We mentioned these countries because we have a growing ministry presence in those countries. But of course, from wherever you're joining us in Kenya in, uh, or outside this country, whatever continent, you're very, very, very welcome to our service today. If you haven't done so before, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification uh, bell to give you reminders whenever we put content out there. And also remember to tweet uh, using our hashtag, Given Thanks. We'd like to hear your thoughts and your comment and also just what you feel about our service today. All right, our speaker for today will be our Deputy Bishop, Karita Bagara. In a little while, he'll be coming to share on how we are to be thankful to God. You don't want to miss that. He will be coming in in a short while, but first, a clip is coming your way, which will give you very important notices about our ministry here at SITAM. We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM or those of you streaming live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before or even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. Planning to get married? We urge all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly to the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. 
We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitem Church offices are open between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Please remember that all our assemblies around Kenya are open for in-person services. Seating capacity is limited to not more than two-thirds of the capacity of the sanctuary and all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitam Broadcast Service. Thanks for paying attention to these notices. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. One way you can express your thanksgiving to the Lord is by giving God a special offering. Why don't you consider that? To give God an offering that will just express how grateful you are. But first, allow me to pray for all your offerings and also the tithes that you'll be giving to the Lord today. Father Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you have given us something to bring to your house. We pray that as your people give to your house, that you're going to use this, uh, these resources for the advancement of the kingdom. We also want to pray for those who have the responsibility to, this, uh, to, to decide where this money is go. Father, we pray that your wisdom will rest upon them, that, Father, they will, uh, they will walk with you towards your work. We we'll bless you and we exalt you. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. A clip is coming your way that will give you information on how you can give of your tithes and of your offerings. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work even in these trying times. As we seek to bring the spread of the virus under control, we believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. For the easy management of our finances, we have established a common payment platform for all our giving irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the platforms of M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 933-934. For the account name, please indicate the SITAM assembly you attend. And if you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of SITAM, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all the other SITAM people numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. The account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries. The bank, Cooperative Bank, a University Way branch. Account number is 011-280-617-639-06. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. The SWIFT code, KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. That is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering, and every generous material support. God bless you. And now we have gotten to the time to hear from the Word of God. And our speaker today is none other than the Deputy Bishop here at Sitem, Reverend Dr. Karita Bagara. The topic for his sermon today is Thanksgiving. Please engage us on Twitter. Let us know what uh, you hear from this sermon so that we can get to be encouraged from what you have heard from this sermon. And now, our Bishop, you're very welcome. Thank you, Pastor Janet and the worship team for leading us so well. And we want to thank you, our listener, for being here for God's word. Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that it would please you to speak to every one of us that is listening to this broadcast. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Rudyard Kipling was an English journalist. He was also a short story writer, a poet, but also 
a novelist who was a man of no little means. One time he encountered a newspaper reporter. The news, uh, news uh, uh, paper reporter said to him, I hear you have made so much money out of writing that each of your written words is worth $100. And then the, the reporter went ahead and produced a $100 bill. And he said, here, give me a word that's worth this much. Kipling kept quiet for a moment. Then he went ahead and picked the $100 bill, pocketed it, and he said, thanks. Kipling was right. Thanksgiving is invaluable. And it is one of those things that we have missed in our lives and something that would make our lives much richer. And so today we want to talk about this $100 word that can make a difference in the lives of so many of us. Asaf, who is a famous writer in the book of Psalms, has written in Psalms 50 verse 23 and said, the one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. By this, Asaph implies that none but those who make sacrifices of thanksgiving and set their lives right with God are truly pleasing to the Lord. He teaches that we must ensure the pair of thanksgiving and right living are not divorced. The one who holds the two together to borrow from somebody else is living what is called praise living. And that brings joy to the heart of God. One like that stands to gain God's salvation. Praise living is consistent with what Jesus taught. Worship in spirit, but also in truth, in genuineness, in reality. And thus, praise living is antithetical to formalism and hypocrisy when it comes to worship. But to focus on what we are here to talk about, that is thanksgiving, I turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, uh, all the way to 18. And it says, Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. From this, we learn that the believer is expected to continue in an attitude of thanksgiving, come joy, come sorrow. This is, is an important reminder to us this morning as we come towards the end of the year. We need to count the blessings of God and live a life of thanksgiving for what God has done. But before I jump the gun, let me ask, why is it that we find it so difficult to give thanks? I want to give three reasons. The first one is pride. When we think that we are entitled to things, when we think that it is me who has worked very hard and I am reaping the fruits of my labor, then we don't give thanks. Henry Ward Beecher says, pride slays thanksgiving, but a humble mind is the soil out of which thanksgiving grows naturally. A proud man is seldom a grateful man, for he thinks sorry, for he never thinks he gets as much as he deserves. When you think that it is you that has worked and you deserve what you are getting, you will not give thanks. But when you are humble, when you allow yourself to be submitted to God, then you will give thanks. So pride is the first hindrance, and I would say a very major one. The second thing that stops us from giving thanks is when we have an attitude of discontent and a complaining attitude. Such attitudes complains about everything, both good and bad. How can you con complain about good? 
Let me illustrate it by a story of a farmer whose crop had done so well. And at the end of the, uh, the crop uh, being harvested, she was complaining, what will I feed my animals with? God had blessed her with abundant harvest and with good harvest, but she wished she had some harvest that was not so good so that she can feed her animals, and she was complaining about that. You see, brothers and sisters, some of us complain about the good things that happen. It is like those people who complain that roses have thorns. But you can reverse that and say, I am grateful that thorns have roses. And I am sure that as we sit here to listen to God's word, that there are some of us that need to change the attitude from that of complaining to that of thanksgiving and to see the good things that God has done in our lives. We need to check for the silver lining in every bad situation. But thirdly, we don't give thanks because of familiarity. When you become familiar with the blessing that has come your way, chances are that you will take them for granted. In the Bible, we see the people of Israel complaining in the wilderness for a miracle of provision. They are in the wilderness and God is providing for them every day. But they get to a place where they say, this manna that God provides, it gets to a place where to them it is disgusting. And they forget that they are, it is a miracle that is happening to them. They do not plant, they do not harvest, and yet they eat every day, but they complain about the blessing of God. Is it only the Israelites that do this? I know that there are some of us that are seated and listening to me and they are complaining about their lives and they forget that it is a blessing that God gives them every morning. He renews his masses by giving them life and that same life is what they are complaining about. I wish I was not alive. What about you that is complaining about a job? Yet there are so many people that are looking for opportunities to get a job so that they can put bread on the table. We are just like them. We have provisions that God has made for us on a continuous basis, but we keep complaining. Someone has observed that if stars came out once a year, we would all go out to watch them. But we take them for granted because we can see them almost any night when the sky is clear. It is an example of how we can become so familiar with the blessing of God. The English uh, philosopher uh, Gilbert K. Chesterton said, when it comes to life, the critical thing is whether you take things for granted or take them with gratitude. Whether you take things for granted or you take them with gratitude. I pray that all of us that are listening to me will get to the place where we are taking things with gratitude, even when they are so common, so that, you know, we would become, you know, familiar with them. Let you be grateful for what God has done. I think that's why we should pray the prayer of George Herbert, who said, Thou who hast given me so much, give me one more thing, a grateful heart. That's my prayer today, that we will ask the Lord to give us grateful hearts. You see, thanksgiving need also to be expressed. When it comes to thanksgiving, we need to be like the Samaritan leper that Jesus healed, and there were 10 of them. The people that were healed were 10. But there was this Samaritan leper that remembered to come back to Jesus and say thank you. And for that, he went home greatly blessed and assured because Jesus said, go, thy faith has made thee well. And he went away assured that God was happy with him. While the other nine just took what had been given them and uh, never remembered to express their gratitude. Let us learn to express our gratitude because it opens doors for many other blessings like it did for this man. According to Zig Ziglar, Gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. 
the more you express gratitude for what you have, the more likely you will have even more to express gratitude for. So let us learn to give thanks. Let us be those people that remember to come back to God and say, Lord, I am grateful. And I am encouraging us to go to God and give thanks, to go to our parents and give thanks, to go to our siblings and express gratitude for what they have done for us. You see, I want to mention that gratitude or thanksgiving is unique to the creature. God cannot thank himself, just like you can't give something to somebody and then you thank yourself. So think how much he must be happy to see our, his children going back to express gratitude to him. The Bible says that he dwells in the praises or in the midst of the praises of his people. And that praise could also be taken as thanksgiving because when you give thanks, you could also be praising God. No wonder Isaac Walton said that God has two dwellings, one in heaven and the other in a meek and thankful heart. I want God to dwell in my heart because I am grateful. And I want to encourage you to join me in thanksgiving. So let us thank God by acts of kindness to others, by the use of our time, by the use of our talents, by the use of our treasure. Let us express gratitude by blessing others, by becoming a source of you know, gratitude in the lives of others because of what we have done. And when we do acts of kindness, we will find that we can touch anybody. We can communicate to anyone. Mark Twain said kindness is a language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. So let us be those kinds of people that cause others also to give thanks to God. In the book of Corinthians, Paul writing to the Corinthians, he told them, because of their thanks, I mean, because of their giving or acts of kindness to the people that were needy, God was being thanked. And I want people to thank God because I was in their space. I want to encourage you also to do the same. You see, gratitude flows not from the abundance of our pocket, but from the abundance of our hearts. When we have a right heart, in its place, uh, then we will do what we are talking about and we will bless others. I want to say also that thanksgiving is expansive. Consider the blessing of our burdens. The person washing dirty dishes should be grateful because they are evidence of God's provision. How many people are dying of hunger the person who is washing a lot of clothes should be grateful because God has given that and not be complaining. He should see that God has been at work and has been making provisions over and over. And what is it that you've been complaining about? We want you to know that even in burdens, you can thank God. As we thank God, let us remember to thank him even for the things that you know, he protected us from all the things that he didn't do. We thank God for what he has done, but we also thank him for what he didn't, you know, didn't happen. For example, he protected us and we are alive today. If you are listening to me, it is because you are alive and it means that God has shielded you. Perhaps you did not, you know, you did not get sick through the year. That is something to thank God for. So it's expansive in the sense that there are so many things that we can thank God for. C.S. Lewis speaks to this when he says, we ought to give thanks for all fortune. If it is good, because it is good. If bad, because it works in us patience, humility, contempt of this world, and the hope of our eternal country. Let us learn to give thanks. You see, the passage that we read told us to give thanks in every circumstance. I want also to underline here that it says in every circumstance, not necessarily for every circumstance. We don't give thanks for difficult things, but in those difficult situations that we may be in. I am sure Paul and Cyrus, when they are singing in prison, 
they are not thanking God and singing to God because of being in prison, but rather, despite being in prison, we will thank God who knows what he is doing. Jonah, according to the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 7 through to 9, and you can go and check it, he is also in the stomach of the, of the, of the fish that swallowed him. And from there, he cries out to God. He talks to God and he, he says he gives thanks because God is worth, you know, our praise and our thanksgiving despite the situation that we may be facing. So let us thank this God who gives a song in the night seasons. That's what it says in the book of Job, chapter 35, verse 10, that when we are in difficult situations, we can still sing to him and worship him. Not for, but in that particular situation. Friends, why is it difficult to give thanks? It's because we don't learn it. And thanksgiving is a learned discipline. Thanksgiving does not come naturally. Children do not naturally give thanks. They must be taught. Similarly, immature Christians will not give thanks naturally. They must practice it so that they perfect it. We must learn to count our blessings, naming them one by one, and not focus on our needs and our wants, and we will be surprised at what God has done for us. There is need for this discipline of counting the many blessings that God has brought our way. And as we count them, we go to back to God and tell him, thank you for the things that you have done in my life. But why should we give thanks? We give thanks because of the benefits that we reap from him. Psalms 103 verse 2 through to 5 says we should not forget all his benefits. And the psalmist there lists a number of things that you can thank God for. He says, thank God because he forgives sins. And that's the greatest blessing that we can receive. The assurance that it is well with us and with God. We have peace with God because he forgives sins and reconciles us to himself. Because he heals our diseases. Because he redeems us from the pit. I don't know how many of us have had a difficult situation and God has brought you out because he crowns us with love and compassion. His loving kindness is abundant. It, we are told that it is renewed every morning. That's why we are alive. He satisfies our desires. And I know that there are some of you that didn't even pray, but you had a desire and God has satisfied that desire. It has come to be, and it says, with good things. And finally, because he renews us like the ego, he has refreshed us. We were giving in, we were giving up, but God gave us a new lease of life, a new lease of energy, and we continue. So we can thank God for the many things that he has done, just like the psalmist says. There is a verse that I want to draw your attention to. Psalm 81 verse 10. It says, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open your mouth and I will feel it. This verse is telling us because of what he has done, he brought us out of the land of Egypt. We can thank God for that. But secondly, because he will feel it because of what he is doing currently and will do in the future. We can thank him for what he has done and what he is doing and what he will do in the days that lie ahead. But also, that statement, open wide your mouth and I will feel it, I read somewhere that it comes from a tradition where if you visited a king and you pleased him by how you spoke, or by the way you conducted yourself. When you are leaving, he would say, open your mouth wide. And as you open your mouth, he would fill it with good things like pearls. And you, you know, depending on how big your, uh, uh, your mouth is, you would walk away with, with as much wealth as your mouth can contain. Maybe jewels. But to apply it to scripture, 
I would say that when we open our mouths wide and we thank God and we bless him and we exalt him, the more we thank him in our prayers, the more we please him by what we do, by our conduct, by our proclaiming the gospel, by living right, by becoming a blessing to others, by speaking the truth, the more we also express our gratitude to him, he will fill us with good things. He will tell us, open wide your mouth and I will fill it with good things. And I want to believe that we will do this. We will be those people that bless others. I want to say that there are consequences to not giving thanks. In the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 21, it says, For although they knew God, these are people that knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. And it continues to say, therefore, God gave them up. I don't want to live in this world as one that God has given up on. And I don't want you either to be one of those people that God has thrown up his hands and said, I give up on this person. And why would he do that? Because we do not glorify him as God by the way we live, or we don't give thanks to him for what he has done and what he is doing in our lives. I want to urge us to become those that are opening our mouths wide to give him praise, to give him glory. As I come towards the end, and in line with what I have been telling you, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of CBS and give thanks first to God who has made this program possible throughout this year and the years before and the year before and the things that he has allowed us to communicate and the blessing that he has caused us to be. So we thank God. We are grateful to God and we ask you to join us in thanking God for that. But we also want to thank you, our listeners, if you were not there, it would, be, it would be wasted effort. It would be futile for us to come here and keep on talking. So I thank you on behalf of Sitam Broadcast Service. And we ask you to join us in thanking God for the others that are, that are also in this platform and are following us. I want to thank all the content providers, those that have been here and have shared the word of God. Uh, over the period that CBS has been in operation. I want to thank God and to thank you technical people, the people behind the cameras, the people that are seated, you know, editing, you know, and making sure that this is broadcasted. All the sound people. I mean, I may not be able to mention everyone. The, the people that do the lighting and all the graphics, we thank you and we pray that God will bless you all the support team and staff that ensure that things are in place and they arrange this place. I may not be able to mention everybody, but we are grateful and we are thankful and we pray that you too will be thanking people this year. Again, I say, remember to thank your parents if they are there. Remember to thank your, your, your siblings. Remember to thank uh, your, your, your children or your parents, you know, Thank God for all the people that have been used of God to become a blessing in your life. And in so doing, we will make our community a better community. Let us not be in the habit of being too familiar with each other. The Lord bless you and the Lord do you good. Allow me to pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for reminding us that thanksgiving is something you expect of every one of us. And I pray that you will help us to practice so that we will not just be mere hearers of the word, but we will be practitioners of the same. We pray that our lives will become better for having obeyed the truths that we have learned today. And we ask this in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a great time. 
Thank you so much, Deputy Bishop, for that amazing sermon. Thank you for allowing God to use you today. All right. In case you have been blessed by the sermon, please share a link to somebody who was not in this sermon so that they too can be blessed the same way you have been blessed or even more. You never know. Believe it or not, we have come to the end of our service. Uh, but before we share the benediction, allow me to bring just a few notices to you, reminding you that on Tuesday, we meet for After Sunday Live, where it's a forum where you can ask questions concerning the sermon for today. This will, uh, you can catch us on Hope FM, Hope TV, and on our Satan chat online social media platform. Reverend Carita will be there to answer any question that you have or you have. Please also join us on Wednesday uh, from 6 p.m. for our prayer service. You can catch us on Hope FM, Hope TV, and our Satan chat online social media platform. Our pastors will be there to take in your prayer requests and to pray for the same. Please keep tweeting and posting and share your feedback for our service today. Remember to use the hashtag given thanks. If you have made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, we would like to, to know that you're out there. Please contact us using the WhatsApp number 0728221221. Uh, and the numbers will also be rolling on your screen and we will sure to follow up this week and to help you start off this journey through discipleship. All right, allow me to pray. Father, we thank you for the service. We thank you for being with us from the beginning until the end. We pray that you will bless our week. It will be a fruitful week and that we will go into the week with much thanksgiving even as we uh, get into December and we wind up this year because indeed you deserve every, all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and may he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Until next week, God bless you.